What up y'all, Rap Critic here, and this was a record label requested review. And if you'd like to make a live stream request, because regular reviews are kind of full up right now, or if you'd want to get yours priority requested to come up next, head on over to ko-fi.com slash rapcritic, or patreon.com slash rapcritic to see all my stuff first, plus join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So today's episode's gonna be a little different, because, you know, honestly, since its inception, hip-hop has always been about blending genres and challenging what it means to be a rap song, first out of the need to fit in with the late 70s with the prominent genres of the day like funk, punk, and R&B. But today, while there's still plenty of straightforward rapping that still exists, a lot of it is integrated into a natural mix of the artist's musical influences, uh, mapped over what we would consider what functions as a rap song. And personally, I've always been pretty lenient with what qualifies as a rap track. From Beck's Loser or Red Hot Chili Peppers' Give It Away, where they mostly feel like rock songs but have a faster-paced cadence that sounds like a rap but without the typically expected sound you'd associate with rap music and the time I'm too fancy so I was a monkey butane in my face and I'm out to cut the chunk what I got you gotta get it put it in you feel it with the feeling don't stop sing songy stuff with melodic deliveries that still hint at the elevated conversational tone of a rap, like Bone Thugs and Harmony, or all those sleepy-eyed hybrid rap singing guys who keep showing up on my lo-fi instrumental playlists. At the end of the day, sure, certain instruments will be affiliated with certain genres, but they're not always fixed to a rigid line. I dare say hip-hop's the ultimate example of this. You can meld just about any different genre together and still have it be a hip-hop song as long as it clicks right. Now, with all that genre-inclusive stuff out of the way, I don't think today's song counts as a rap song, like, at all. <laughs> And I checked some of his other material to see if he raps sometimes or, or does something like the artist I mentioned earlier, but no, he seems like a pretty straightforward singer-songwriter type guy. There's definitely some hip-hop-inspired production flares in some of the songs for sure, but not any more than most modern pop songs that take cues from how a lot of mainstream rap songs are produced. And look, I'm all for challenging what a genre really is in the context of how it blends with different elements and whatnot, and I've heard tons of Asian artists like BTS, for example, who started off doing a lot of rapping, so I'd put them in the rap category to some degree. But as for this guy, he's not, like, doing a delivery in a heightened conversational tone or even a sing-songy rap flow, so I have no idea why they asked me to review this one. In fact, the most rap-like material I could find was the fact that he did the theme song for Chainsaw Man a year or so ago, which at least has a bit of a rap flow to it at one point. <laughs> But hey, I already got paid the priority request from the company that wanted to promote this song, so I guess this is happening now. Well, apparently confused record labels aside, I will say as a bliggity blurred who grew up listening to a lot of opening and ending credit anime music, I have been falling down deep rabbit holes of city pop lately, you know, when I'm finally able to figure out how to search what their names are and scroll through their song radios on Spotify, so I do have a bit of a palette for this stuff already, at least in a basic bitch sense anyways. And besides, my worst lyrics list covers stuff outside of rap, right? So uh, why not? I guess you could just call me the general music lyric analyzer for this one? I, I don't think that'll stick, but, but you get the idea. Because I do enjoy talking about interpretations of lyrics in general, uh, that's just a fun thing for me. Like, ultimately, you can feel any way you want about abstract sounds that an artist uses to make a song, and it just depends on how it strikes you most of the time. But as for the lyrics, well, words have meaning, and while their meaning can definitely be interpreted different ways, it's pretty directly anchored to the context of what the other words in the sentence mean. Of course, this presents a challenge when it's in a completely different language, but I found this translation on Genius, and I think I've actually been able to catch on exactly which phrases are said where. <laughs> Because if you could feel where the phrases end and how the lyrics are mapped out, I think it's pretty clear where what he's saying goes where. Aha, I heard the word sayonara. I know that word, so, so I do have this lined up right. And like, okay, to drop the veil, this show is about joking on lyrics where artists say something without sometimes realizing how it may come off as. But when it's a completely different culture and language, you run the risk of poking fun at something sensitive or something you just didn't have the complete context for. So I want to be clear, I don't want to flippantly be on no xenophobic shit if I can help it. But like, you know, I still gotta make the shit entertaining, so understand, any jokes and jabs I make, it's all in good fun, okay? So alright, let's talk about the lyrics. What is this song about? <laughs> Well, okay, we're already on some deep philosophical shit I was not expecting. From where does spring continue to emerge from? Uh, like, geez, you already got me thinking about the nature of the universe and the energy of creation that sparks new life into being. I, I think this might be a little above my pay grade. <laughs> 
and then the way his wording perfectly sums up the way being an adult sneaks up on you in terms of having to take on a world of responsibilities while still feeling like you're not mature enough to handle it. Man, this is getting way too real way too fast. Like, goddamn, the structure of the phrasing and the thoughtful consideration of what's being said, it, it feels like some romantic poem from 200 years ago or something. <laughs> I mean, how many songs make you think about the majestic beauty of a bird in flight, only to also make the nuanced observation that the bird doesn't seem to care about its incredible ability? Like, wow, you spend all this time wishing you were free as a bird, meanwhile the bird doesn't even seem like it's enjoying the lifestyle it has. <laughs> So much so that the rotating thought process itself ultimately does nothing but fill in with existential dread. Yeesh, was not expecting such a melancholy theme from such a bouncy, happy sounding song. Definitely got the hey ya effect going on here. Seriously, I, before reading the translation, I had no idea it was going to be just this sad. I mean, I guess the video gives a bit of a hint to it, what with the turmoil of the looting going on around him. Plus, there's a cool effect they're doing where the video seems to be done in a long one-shot take, but it rewinds every now and then, so you're going earlier and earlier in the scene until eventually it gets to the end, or or the beginning, or or, or maybe just the middle, because it, it seems like it's hinting at the idea that he's stuck in a cycle that keeps happening. <laughs> Wow, this is like cosmically sad. Like, in a way, I don't even think I have the mental faculty to even really fathom right now. So I, I don't want to hear all this. I just want to dance. Just, just let me hear the pretty music and ignore the translation. <laughs> Nope, nope, not gonna look at the translation, just gonna enjoy the music and keep dancing. For real though, it's a pretty solid track musically, with the hopping violins and cellos, the peppy drum track and his crystal clear shimmering vocal lines that have an element of playfulness to him and sometimes have a bit of raspiness kicked in when he says certain lines. <laughs> Okay, I do admit I want to know what he's saying when he's singing that scratchy bit there. All right, show me those lyrics. Well, damn, what the hell did I miss? All right, enough with the stereotypical sad boy imagery. I get it. Uh, we all have nothing to really live for because everything we do is ephemeral and pointless and only leaves us with pain over the loss of what we had. Jesus, stop rubbing our noses in it. Oh God, the bird's not even there anymore. No. <laughs> what the hell is he sounding so happy about? This is the most artfully depressing shit I've ever reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Stop making me feel so inconsolably sad! How dare you try to touch my soul with these heart-wrenching lyrics! Oh wait, but is there like supposed to be a nugget of hope here? Maybe calling back to that first lyric of the song and, and alluding to the idea that all this pain and tragedy is part of what fuels our desire to reach for those new beginnings. Those fleeting moments of happiness that feel so much more worth it to hang on to and treasure and give deeper meaning to them when we fall back into those depths of despair. <laughs> But that doesn't stop the pain from hurting less, does it? And are we even learning anything other than that life is perpetual suffering? Oh god, and we're just doomed to feel the weight of this pain forever, aren't we? It's never gonna stop, is it? It's never gonna stop, because it don't stop, and it can't quit, because it can't wait! Alright, enough of this already! I mean, God, is that what your game is, record label who sent me this? To make a song so undeniably good, but also so soul-shatteringly sad that I'm tortured by the idea of listening to it again because now I know what it's actually about? Well, okay, you win. It's a five out of five for me, all right? It's an incredible song that's jam-packed with powerful poetic imagery and beautiful music, and I hope it lasts throughout the ages as an incredible piece of art that encapsulates the universal feelings of desire and longing that knows no time limit. Are you happy now? God. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, because it helps. Comment if you have anything to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe and the bell, because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, again, that's kofi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing, where you can see episodes early and join the RC Discord and all that fun stuff. Well, I'm the general music lyric analyzer, and I've learned my lesson. I am never going to look up the translation for a happy-sounding J-pop song ever again. Jesus.